fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll still Cale Haywood, who operated a one-man bank in Sage City, Montana, had the reputation of being honest, which he was. Nevertheless, the banker kept two kinds of books. In a big ledger which reposed on his desk, he entered accurate records of sums deposited and withdrawn. Another bulky account book, which always lay on his exchange counter, appeared to be equally innocent, but it held Haywood's protection against hold-up men. The centers of its leaves had been cut out, making it a box in which he kept a Colt 44. It was there when Tonto entered the bank. Haywood eyed the Indian suspiciously. <coughs> Redskin, you strayed into the wrong place. This is a bank, Savvy. Uh, me, Savvy. Me got something to tell you. You have? Well, it can wait. I see Mr. and Mrs. Mason coming in. Oh, me wait outside. Well, howdy, Judd. Howdy, Martha. Uh, let the engine out, will you? Sure, sure thing. Well, I haven't seen much of you young folks recently. Martha and I have been working hard on our ranch. Oh. Trying to earn money enough to pay off the mortgage. I think we've made it. Well, good for you. With the interest to now, how much do we owe? Well, uh, $5,600. Martha, that's just what we've saved. Uh, we have it all in gold, Cale. Well, I like to deal in gold. Oh, uh, could we have some coin wrappers and a bag to put the money in before we bring it into you? Uh, of course. I have some right here under the counter that I give to customers. Uh, here you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Haywood. Don't mention it. We'll have the money here on time, Cale. Yeah. Uh, come on, Martha. Well, good day, folks. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Haywood. Uh, say, engine, come back in. Ah, uh, me coming. Well, we're alone now. What do you want to say? Oh, me want to... Uh... Warn you, two outlaw plan hold up here. How do you know? Me and friend come from town in Wyoming. We meet Indian boy. Him work in livery stable. Him tell about outlaw. Yes, go on. Outlaws keep horses in stable. Boy sleep in hay. Them not know him there. Him wake up, hear him talk about robbing you. I see. All right, Injun, thanks for telling me. Well, me look for sheriff, not find him, so come here. <laughs> well, none of the town folks see much of the sheriff these days. It's near election time, and he's doing a lot of campaigning out in the county. Well, uh, 
Thanks for coming here. Oh, uh, you... You're welcome. Me go now. When Tonto rejoined the Lone Ranger who had been waiting outside the town, he reported his conversation with Cale Haywood, then added... Me not think banker believe me. Him ready to shoot while me talk. Do you mean that he carried a holstered gun and kept a hand on it? No, him not carry gun. Him keep it inside big book on counter. Inside a book? Mm, that right, Kimasabi. Oh. Him lift up cover a book a little way. Put fingers under it. Hand open, thumb back. Same as feller fixed to draw gun from holster. Did you actually see a gun in the book? <laughs> uh, him try not let me see it, but way him act... Make me watch close. Ah, me see 45 muzzle. He must have cut the centers out of the pages to make a place for it. Well, that's so. Well, if he's taken that precaution against bandits, it's likely that your warning will put him further on his guard. Well, what we do now, Kimisami? We go on looking for Rusty Jackson and Slim Trent. Those Texas outlaws have left a trail of robbery and murder, which now extends from the Mexican border through most of the Rocky Mountain states and territories. Well, you think them... Same fellers Indian boy tell about Kimasabi. Jackson and Trent, as well as the four horses they've been riding and leading, answer the description the boy gave us. Too bad them leave stable two days before we talk to boy. Yeah, luck has favored them more than once. Except for a heavy rain, we might have found their trail in Wyoming. We ride hard on way here. Maybe them close now. The Badlands are also close. Outlaws wouldn't want a better place to hide while waiting a favorable chance to rob the Sage City Bank. Uh, plenty hard to find anyone there, Kimasabi. Hard or not, the job must be done. Now, only one stream of water flows out of the Badlands in this area. That's the Bear River. That's so. The outlaws need water for themselves and their horses. So we'll start by searching along the river. Here, Silver. Here, fella. You said it'd be fully easy. <laughs> one, Silver. One, Scout. On the following day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the headwaters of the Bear River, which had its source in a series of springs. There, they halted. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, it'd be full easy a moment. Tonto, we haven't found a single hoof print along the river. Uh, maybe outlaws give us slip again. Quiet, Silver, quiet. Tonto, there are other horses in the thicket over there. Get down. Easy, uh, Silver. Oh, no. <laughs> Drawing their guns, the masked man and Indian crawled through a dense growth of alders. Beyond the screen of stunted trees, they found a huge overhanging rock which provided shelter from the weather. Under it, two horses were picketed. After assuring themselves that the place was otherwise deserted, the Lone Ranger and Tonto moved in for a close inspection of the animals. Tonto, we found two of the horses the stable boys saw. This one has a scarred fetlock he told about. The other has the color formations he described. Well, me see tracks of uh, two other horses here. Two fellers ride them away. Oh, how long ago? Oh, tracks look. Three, four hours old, Kimasabi. And the outlaws may be in Sage City right now. Uh, what we do? You ride into town. I'll wait here. Meanwhile, an election had been in progress in Sage City. Taking advantage of excitement... Rusty Jackson and Slim Trent, the Texas outlaws, had ridden into town without attracting attention. They drew rein in an alley beside the bank, dismounted leisurely and stretched. But for all their show of indolence, their eyes were busy. Rusty was saying, I see the banker through the side window. He's standing at the counter alone. Yeah, then let's take the place. No, 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 not so fast, Slim. He's looking toward the street and would see us before we could get in. We'll wait until he moves away. Yeah, he's moving there. He's going to his desk. Yeah, then here we go. Turn your head away from the street. Slip your neckerchief up over your face and keep your hat pulled down, your head low. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. He's still at his desk. I'll go in first. 
Reach, fella. Reach. But, yes, yes, I'm reaching. Don't shoot. Get behind the counter, partner. I'll stand here and cover you and the door both. Right. Scurrying behind the counter, Slim Jackson <laughs> ran his hands over the banker's clothes. Finding no weapon on his person, the outlaw snarled. Haven't you got a gun, fella? You haven't found any. Take a look around. He hasn't got a weapon within reach that I can see. Then make him come up this way and open the safe. You heard the order, fella. Move. Yes, yes, I'll open it. Just give me time. We'll give you one minute. <laughs> Kneeling before the safe, which stood close to the counter, the banker unlocked and opened it. For the moment, he had the use of his hands and was hidden from Rusty's sight by the counter. As Slim peered into the safe, Haywood partly straightened himself and attempted to slip the six-gun from its hiding place in the ledger. He had the cover partly open when Rusty saw the movement and caught a glimpse of the gun. The outlaw sprang to the counter. No, you don't. Oh. Oh. Uh, is he dead? Right. Why'd you do it? Tried to sneak out a six-gun. I don't see any. It's inside that big book. Now, what's in the safe? An open sack of wrapped gold money. All right, grab it and let's get out of here. That shot will rouse the town. Yeah, I'm bringing it. Great as was the election day hubbub in Sage City, the shot in the bank had been heard by several businessmen. Doc Lewis, the county coroner, looked out of the window of his office on the second floor of a nearby building, saw the masked men, and snatched up a sharps rifle, which he had kept handy for just such an occasion. Just as the fleeing outlaws rounded the corner into the alley, the doctor fired. The shot staggered Slim. I'm hit. Here, give me the sack. Here, take it. All right, keep going. I'll cover you. Firing into the window from which the doctor had shot, Rusty followed Slim into the alley. There they found momentary security. Rusty helped his partner into the saddle, shoved the sack of money into one of his own saddlebags, and mounted. At the same moment, the bell on the town hall began to ring. Slim, head your horse away from the street. Lead him, Rusty. I'll have to hold of the saddle. Hold on, right. I get the reins. Come on, get up there, boy. Get up. As the outlaws fled down the alley, Sheriff Marlin, who had previously been engaged in safeguarding his own interests at the voting place, led a sortie of citizens to the alley's mouth. They're getting away. Lead won't stop them that far away. Bill, round up a posse while I see what happened in the bank. Get your horses, fellas. Get your horses, fellas. Several hours after the bank robbery, Judd Mason sat at a table in his ranch house on Bear River. He had been putting gold coins into the wrappers and bag provided by Cale Haywood. As the last roll disappeared into the sack, Martha leaned over his shoulder and smiled. We're starting a new life, dear. From now on, we'll have no worries. Uh, you know, I'm glad this is honest money. I wouldn't... Have... Listen... Somebody's coming. Our riders wouldn't come back this early. When I give them the afternoon off to go to town, I figured they'd stay for the next night celebration. Who stopped right outside the door? Quick. Hide the money bag under the couch while I get my gun and see who it is. All right. I'll have it out of sight in no time. There. It can't be seen. Hello, in there. What do you want? Let me bring in a wounded man. He was shot by engine. Oh. Uh, just a moment. Oh, put your gun away, mister. Can't you see my partner's bad off? Yes. Judd, put it away and help him inside with the poor fellow. Sure, sure. Here, I'll give you a hand. Oh, no, I, I can tell him. Just tell me where to put him. Over there on the couch. But let him down gently. Oh, I, I'm trying to. There he is. I'd better lock the door again. Uh, what do you think about him, ma'am? Why, oh, I'm afraid he's dying. But I'll do all I can for him. Where'd the engines attack you, stranger? Down by the Bear River Bridge. There were five or six of them, and they looked like renegade Sioux. My horse is tuckered, or I'd ride on to Fort Layton and tell the soldiers. Turn both your horses into my corral and take my roan mare. She's fast. Tell the colonel to send the post surgeon here to the Judd Mason Ranch. Oh, thanks, Mr. Mason. You'll never regret what you're doing. We have to help one another in this country. Did the engines follow you? No, but... Anyhow, they wouldn't try to attack a ranch and a gang that small. No, no, I reckon not. But I'm going to be careful. Now, I'll let you out. So long, partner. Adios, friends. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The murderous bank robber, Rusty Jackson, had left his wounded partner at Judd Mason's ranch house. Then he continued his flight with a bag of money, using a horse furnished by the unsuspecting rancher. A half hour later, a furious storm broke over the Bear River Valley, hastening the fall of night. As thunder shook the house and wind-driven rain lashed the wind through a last labored breath. Covering his face with a blanket, Martha turned to Judd, who had been standing by with a lamp. I wonder who he was. In the excitement, I forgot to ask the other fellow who they were or where they came from. More horsemen, maybe the soldiers. No, no, they, they couldn't get here so soon. Maybe the engines are coming. Stand back from the window. They're white men, they have lanterns. Now they've stopped. One lantern is going towards the corral. The others are coming this way. A few moments later, a fist thudded on the door. Who's out there? Come in, man. With a sheriff in the lead, a half dozen men hurried in out of the storm, stamping muddy boots on the threshold and shaking water from sodden hats. I reckon you're after those renegade redskins. Redskins? What are you talking about? The soldiers wiped out the last of the renegades out in the Badlands weeks ago. Oh? oh I didn't know. I've been sticking close to the ranch. And I don't suppose you heard of the bank robbery. What? Bank robbery? Where? Now, this afternoon, two bandits killed Haywood and carried off a sack of gold pieces. Poor Mr. Haywood. Doc Lewis here plugged one of the varmints before they got away. Darn tootin' they did. We were close on to them when the storm broke and washed out their trail. At that time, they were headed straight for this place. I figured maybe you'd seen them. Maybe. Maybe. Jed, uh, who's that on the couch? That dead man, Doc. He was dying when another fellow brought him here. He said they'd been bushwhacked by redskins. Yeah, I'm uncovering him. Well, I'll be cow kicked. You know him, Doc? I'll swear he's the varmint I plugged at the bank, even if he did have a mask on then. I had no idea he was an owl hoot. Oh, you did? Sure. I found the owl hoot horses in Mason's corral. Well, what of it? I was taken in by that story about the engines and let the other fellow have my mare to ride to the fort for hell. I didn't find any tracks out there except our own. Well, how could you? He rode away while the ground was hard. Since then, it's been raining pitchforks. Men, search this house. A few minutes later, the posse men who had been searching the house reported that they had found no one hiding in it. I didn't think you would, fellas. There wasn't any other outlaw except Judd Mason himself. Why, you... Look here, Sheriff. I was going through the dead polecat's clothes and happened to look under the couch. This is what I found. Hmm. A money sack with Cale Haywood's name on it. It's filled with gold pieces with bank wrappers on it. Doc, that money belongs to Martha and me. We saved it to pay off a mortgage that's due tomorrow. Cale Hayworth gave us the wrappers and bags. It's the truth. You must believe us. Mason, can you account for your movements this afternoon? Oh, sure, I was right here. Martha would tell you the same. She would. She's your wife. If she's your only witness, you're in a bad fix. Sure. You know, I figured right from the start that we'd find some local fella had a hand in the holdup. How so, Doc? Two strangers wearing masks wouldn't have any reason to shoot Cale. We all know that he never carried a gun or even had one around. That's so. He must have recognized Mason's voice. Was that the reason that you plugged him, you coyote? I've said all I'm going to say. You've already talked yourself into a noose. I'm arresting you for bank robbery and murder. No, no. I'll have to take you too, Mrs. Mason. You're a material witness. And I may charge you with being an accessory. John, why did this have to happen just when everything looked so bright? No, no, never mind, honey. Something is bound to happen to Clintus. Well, let's get started back, Sheriff. Load your prisoners and the dead man on a buckboard and bring the horses and money. I'll hold an inquest tonight right in Cale Haywood's bank. Meanwhile, Rusty Jackson, riding furiously through the storm, had reached the source of the Bear River. Possessed of the cunning of a wild animal which always circles its den before entering, he dismounted some distance from the camp and scouted through the thicket. With the noise of the storm dinning in his ears, the lone ranger who was crouched under the overhanging rock failed to hear the outlaw's approach. Rusty was equally ignorant of the masked man's presence. Only a few feet separated the two when a lurid flash of lightning revealed each to the other. 
A fraction of a second later, total darkness engulfed them again. The Lone Ranger sprang, and the outlaw collided with him. Then they were locked in a struggle as fierce as the war of elements which raged around them. I have you now. Yes, again. All oh, right, take this. I took it. Unable to break away from each other or deal anything but short jabs, they grappled and punched until a loose stone threw both of them. Then they rolled, tumbled, and twisted, clawing for guns and striving to prevent each other from drawing them. Another bolt of lightning lanced into the nearby hills, giving the Lone Ranger just time enough to place the position of his adversary's head. Jerking his right arm free, the masked man put all the force he could summon into a piston-like punch to the jaw. Hey, take it! The outlaw went limp with a groan. After disarming the stunned man and making sure that he was incapable of moving temporarily, the Lone Ranger lit a lantern he had found among the camp supplies. Its light enabled him to search and study the crook, as well as a saddlebag he had dropped at the start of the fight. The storm was beginning to subside when the outlaw stirred and sat up. Hey, just where you are, Rusty Jackson. Uh, you, you know me. I read your description often enough in Texas. I think my friend Tonto is coming. Uh, Tonto? Does the name mean something to you? Yeah, plenty. It's the name of an engine who rides with a masked man called the Lone Ranger. Oh, now I know who you are. Oh, Scott. Oh, brother. Oh, oh. You need help, Kimasabi? No, Tonto. Tell me, what happened in Sage City? Outlaws hold up bank, kill banker. One get shot, other one leave him at Judd Mason Ranch, him die. Now Sheriff think Mason is other outlaw, him rest Mason and wife. We have the other outlaw here. Yeah, we'll try and prove it. Coroner holding meeting in bank tonight. Then we'll go there. Take this saddlebag and guard the prisoner while I call Silver and round up the other horses. Later that night, the coroner's inquest was in session at the scene of the crime. The bank building had been taken over for the hearing because the town hall, which was Sage City's only public building and served ordinarily for legal proceedings, was being used by the election board to count votes. An attempt had been made to keep the inquest from the citizens who were already excited over the outcome of the election. A guard stood outside the door as the coroner addressed the jury. You gents on the jury have seen all the evidence and heard all the testimony. What's your verdict? <laughs> Hey, look, a mass man. Steady, all of you. Keep your hands where they are. What do you want here? Justice. Then why are you wearing a mask and holding guns on us? Sheriff, I'm on the side of the law, except when it makes mistakes. My Indian friend and I learned that this bank might be robbed and warned Haywood. If you did, he never told me. Tonto, bring in the other outlaw. Uh, him coming. Sheriff, Doc, there's a fellow who's in our house. He's the dead crook's partner. It's true, it's true. I never saw that man and woman before. Oh. I've never been in Sage City, nor in this bank. I'm just a prospector. This masked man and engine caught and robbed of his money. Here in man's saddlebag is money, Sheriff. It's a loot from the bank robbery. The prisoner had it in his possession when captured. He's Rusty Jackson, a notorious Texas bad man. I believe that he's partnering the hold up with Slim Trent. Never heard of him. Anyhow, the money in this saddlebag is loose. There's not a thing to show that it came from this bank. We've got the real loot here, all wrapped up in Haywood's paper and in his bag. Jackson had plenty of time to dispose of coin wrappers in a sack. Bosh! Sheriff, do you refuse to take Rusty Jackson into custody? I don't aim to arrest him on your say-so. That's final. The Lone Ranger had been watching the outlaw closely and had noticed that his eyes often went to the ledger in which Haywood had hidden the gun. Believing that Jackson had learned the secret of the account book during the robbery, he decided to give him a chance to reach the weapon. The masked man turned to the sheriff again. Under the circumstances, I have no choice other than to escort Mr. and Mrs. Mason to safety and return Jackson to Texas, where he's wanted for several murders and is certain to hang. Sheriff, he's no lawman. He hasn't any right to take me out of your county. The Lone Ranger gave Tonto a meaning glance, and both shifted their guns slightly away from the desperate bandit. Steady, Sheriff. Don't force us to use violence. But Jackson is going to hang... Here or in Texas? At that instant, Rusty Jackson sprang toward the ledger, flung back the cover, and snaked out Cale Haywood's secret six-gun. The sheriff saw him and yelled a warning. Watch out, masked man! But the Lone Ranger had been prepared for just such an eventuality. As the outlaw whirled and cocked the weapon, the masked man swung his right-hand gun across his extended left arm and fired. Oh! The silver slug smashed into the killer's shoulder, spinning him back against the counter as Haywood's gun dropped to the floor. Mr. Coroner, there's your case. Thanks. I see it. That vermin knew that there was a gun inside the ledger. That's something that Cale Haywood kept secret. Jackson lied when he said he'd never been in this place. 
The only way he could have learned about the hidden gun was by being here and doing something that made the banker go for it. Uh, so he's the other outlaw. Mister, I apologize. I suggest that you offer your apologies to Mr. and Mrs. Mason. Folks, I'm mighty sorry about all this. I made a mighty bad mistake, but it was an honest mistake. We understand, Sheriff. Uh, you're free to go home. And, of course, you'll get your money back. Oh. Judd, isn't that wonderful? Sheriff, I can put you in touch with the stable boy who heard Jackson and his partner plan the robbery. He can identify them and their horses. With his testimony and that of Mr. and Mrs. Mason, we should be able to convict the coyote. There should be some record here in the bank showing the amount of cash which Haywood had on hand the morning of the robbery. It may tally with the amount in the saddlebag, for I doubt that Jackson disposed of any. Mm, that's so. We'll make a strong case against him. There isn't a chance in a thousand that a jury will acquit him. But if a lawyer gets him off, I'll take him to Texas myself. Sheriff, the vote has been counted. You're re-elected. Well, I congratulate you, Sheriff. I haven't any congratulations coming, mister. It's a man like you who should be elected to my office. No, I can serve justice better by working as I do. Well, I can see that. A fella like me has to spend too much time looking for votes instead of crooks. There's another way to look at that, Sheriff. If you concentrate on catching crooks and doing your job... You'll get the votes without looking for them. But Come I on, still... Toto. Adios, friend. Adios. Rusty Jackson, I wonder how the masked man managed to catch you. Yeah, you can stop wondering. He's a lone ranger. is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Mm -hmm.